Urban physical planning shines a remarkable form on human wisdom, as exemplified by Governor Chukwu Machal Soludo's visionary policies. Determined to facilitate sustainable growth in Anambra State, Governor Soludo introduced standard measures for infrastructures and facilities within the state. This strategic approach provides framework for a vast urban renewable program that has helped in transforming communities and cities into a livable standard center of progress and prosperity. Welcome to Solution Footprints. My name is Chidima Oranwa. Today, we are highlighting the roles of the Anambra State Physical Planning Board, activities and contributions to a sustainable development in Anambra State. Join me. The beauty of any society depends on the beauty of its architectural structures and layouts which is referred to as urban development and planning by experts. Located in the southeastern part of Nigeria, West Africa, Anambra State, nicknamed the light of the nation, is blessed with a lot of unique heritage such as natural beauty, including serene lakes, scenic landscapes and the majestic Niger River. With an ever-increasing population of 8.5 million people at home and abroad, and a density of 860 square kilometers, that is 2,200 square meters, Anambra State has maintained its integrity in terms of structural design. In the broadest terms, physical planning is the active process of organizing the physical activities and land uses in order to ensure orderly and effective siting and coordination of land users. Physical planning, generally referred to as town planning, is the art of controlling the use of land and building control. It is worthy to note that every development requires planning. Anambra State Physical Planning Board is a major agency of the state government saddled with the responsibility of development control within the state and the 21 local government areas. They make use of master plan to grant approvals for various developments. The 21 local government areas have each a planning authority to monitor, control the use of land, manage and regulate various developments to ensure proper subdivision and land use standards in line with the established laws. Anambra State Physical Planning Law 2013 and building regulatory law 2015 respectively. Our board was set up by law number nine of 2013, which has been amended once. And uh, we're in charge of development control. We're in charge of proving the blighted species in the states. We're in charge of giving permits for all who want to do any development in all parts of the state ex except Oka Capital Territory. Of course, um, all over the country, there is no government that has the, enough human resources to do fiscal planning. So most times you have to collaborate with the private sector. So in Anambra, we are collaborating with um, professionals in the built environment. The goal of the administration of Governor Chukwu Machal Soludo CFR is to ensure that Anambra State become the most livable and smart mega city, a destination point and not a lounge. And it's going to be a responsibility. Collective responsibility of every Anambra person to create and build that livable and prosperous homeland. Our mission is to create a livable and prosperous homeland for our people. According to the People's Manifesto, which Governor Saludo fondly calls my contracts with Indianambra, 
the present government promised to continue and complete the design of the state master plan. Among others, Governor Saludo also assured that the government will complete the master plan of the state drainage system to ensure the systematic discharge and collection points, design and enforce a template of minimum standards for infrastructure and other facilities in cities, markets and communities, embark upon an expansive but phased modernization and urban renewal of Anambra's major urban areas especially starting in the first phase in Oka, Onicha, Newi and Ekulobia urban areas. Professor Ituko Masoludo administration has given us a lot of backing in terms of support for development control. Now we have made it clear to developers anything you want to do, whether you want to build a fence, whether you are renovating your building, whether you are building a new house, the law requires you to come for approval. And if you don't get the approval, whatever you are building is illegal. And so you can see from you know, the beginning of the administration, the first thing we did was the clearing of waterways because of the challenges we have here with flooding. And to the glory of God, after that has been done, uh, that nuisance has been substantially mitigated. Of course, again, you know that the vision of Mr. Governor is to turn Anambra State into a mega city that is livable, prosperous, green, sustainable, and driven by technology. Part of his assurance was to pay special attention to Obuko in Obaru local government area which is home to the largest urban slum in Anambra State. And it will be provided with modern basic amenities and implement robust clean and green initiatives to fulfill the aim of having Anambra as the cleanest and most environmentally friendly state. The foundation work for all these has since commenced. By law, the Anambra State Physical Planning Board, formerly known as Anambra State Urban Development Board, is saddled with the responsibility of regulating and monitoring physical developments in the state, enforcing compliance with zoning regulations and building codes, reviewing and approving building plans and permits, managing urban growth and development in a sustainable manner. The Anambra State Physical Planning Board is entrusted with the tax of managing urban and regional planning issues, which encompasses government involvement, governance and regulation throughout the entirety of the state's boundary. The equally registered communication masts ensure that layouts are well crafted as well as various transportation schemes. As part of his plans to aid the state achieve its mega city status, the physical planning board in the state has undertaken a series of reforms since the advent of Governor Saludo's administration to address the challenges faced by the state physical environment. One of the major challenges Southeast in general is having about our infrastructure development in physical planning is the issue of quality. So when I went to site with some students at the Ekulobia flyover that is under construction to see the aviation, I find out that one of the major issues they consider that actually determine the price of that project is that they are using the pre-stressed concrete technology which is a very high technology presently. In the whole of the Southeast, the only place that technology has been applied is at the construction of the second Niger Bridge by uh, Julius Beja. So I think to that, we have a product that is coming into fiscal planning which will stand the test of time. And also, when you look around and see how uh, the expansion of roads, demolitions going on, people are now being gradually educated. They are becoming not just conscious, but they are becoming ready to entertain what is coming. People are moving away from setbacks. People are beginning to understand that when you go under high tension, you are in trouble. And then the opening up of the waterways, which we experienced, I think has also helped because now the waterways are flowing the way they're supposed to be and then developmental projects are coming. Those ones that are actually obstructing waterways are in trouble. I remember what happened when one church, I think that was the church of Odumeje, was partially you know, affected. Before a lot of things say we are said and all that, but when the governor stood his grants and then I think those, that, that way fiscal planning board in Anambra have been strengthened. Under the regime of Professor Charles Chukuma Saluda's government, Anambra State Physical Planning Board has proposed the expansion of the board's responsibilities to include environmental planning and management. We are now 
focusing on ensuring that everybody who did not get approval, we are giving them a window of three months from next month till July to come. The government is a government that feels the pulse of the people. So, because um, you know people are finding it difficult to build, and the, you know the economy of the country is not even helping them, we are giving them a window between May and July to come and regularize. If you don't have approval, please come and do the approval. We will not even take any penalty from you, but please come and approve. Because we are going to do vigorous development control enforcement after July. On Governor Saludo's directive, for the past two years, the board has established a public outreach program to educate citizens on the importance of proper urban planning and development. This has aided in significant revenue generation as well as reorientate the people. Wow! You all can see the importance of planning in Anambra State and the efforts of Governor Chukumachao Saludo to ensure that Anambra State does not develop into a chaotic slum. Keep it locked on this dial as we bring more your way. With the introduction of numerous reforms, when Governor Saludo came on board in 2022, the board's revenue recorded significant improvements. The growth has been exponential as more Indianambra are now aware of the existence of the board as a regulatory agency and the important role of their involvement in development. There is a lot of improvement now. Uh, uh, if uh, I submitted my application and I have my approval, within two weeks. Before now, dribbling, yeah, before you get your approval, you will go to, it's like uh, traveling here from here to uh, Cameroon. Uh, but now, there's a lot of difference. I'm thanking Governor for wonderful work that he's doing in our member state, uh, precisely in Onichab. I don't believe that Niger Street will be like this, even from Head Bridge um, to Nam Market, many places in Fege. Before, even one hour rain or 30 minutes rain, we come and see many dustbins uh, on the road. So, but now, even if rain, rain two hours, rain five hours, even for the whole day, gutter are yeah, flowing very well, the road is very neat, everything. I like what I said. Even people like to come to a living figure, unlike before, packing out, going to jail, um, housing, territory, but people are now coming back to figure because of uh, a new development in figure. I thank Governor. I thank him. Let him continue like that. I pray to God that after Governor, he go to President. Anambra State Physical Planning Board, under the leadership of Professor Charles Soludo, is now better positioned for continued success and growth. As a result, the state's ease of doing business rating has improved significantly. It ranks as number one in the southeast. This further demonstrates that land and construction are critical to development. Well, at least I, I have great changes. See, now, even that place in Alo, within that figure. And I tell you, know, with the low level, the amount of property, all the all the of my, the amount increase. So, at least the government of the day, Soludo is doing very well on the amount of my. Both got a get a okay, go like all the cutters. Even in the Kita, the choice here by Kita Jet Bridge, very easy. Choice here by Belt and Jaran about, very easy. Choice here by Jaran about Jeffrey, very easy. Choice here by Jeman Market, very easy. All the road has been packed. It is anticipated that revenue will continue to increase due to the effective implementation of sustainable building practices and streamlined processes. It is the same with building plans as there is efficient application and approval processes in place as well as public education initiatives. Most of the people of the landlords, they will know that this is where the physical planning mapped out as a road. We see somebody trying to invest his money there in order to build something. And when you call the physical planning agent or workers to come and stop you work or do it, they will be taking it personal. Which that most of we Anablarians, Niji, out of stubborn. We don't do things with stubborn. If you want to do things, you do things as a matured man. I believe in with this time around and the way they are working with us in our battle, so many people have started benefiting and understand the real job they are doing. <laughs> 
I really thank the governor for his marvelous jobs on our own. Like even in my community, Omwe Boro, a very big general hospital. And to that general hospital, Oro Laibafo, Obi I made that place or the well developed. And that is why the physical planning people do have that. When I organize organized the Ibafo Kodi as in well organized. Kodi Kebende Mwai Febi. So, honestly speaking, the governor is doing very, very well. I pray that uh, after this tenor, he will still continue. I am our executive governor. No Roma, I have foot towards Obaro, Boko. Because I believe in Nayam Fugareba, even Nabenia, Yoro no Bokaya, Kadigo Yoro, Benia. So I'm not sure if you are seeking Oro. You have done so well. Because with the way our governor Saga, Nay Ifron and Kofra, as a developer, it will much improvement. In your market, all the government I know the issue was Saros or Gota. Immediately, I na about one day, an umbra planning committee. They will respond immediately, which is most thing I need. And then, uh, me pena de, eh, ne kelegi si gibigo kiji si ke na romi na ro, na kero na ro akarigo. You kusugo de ba yongo ago, but na ago rogawa. Apart from the provision of resources in order to address the challenges and close up the lacuna in the board's operation. Governor Saludo has approved a review of the planning law of the state, which will strengthen physical planning permits, building control and urban renewal. When enacted, the proposed framework of the law will be to have the Ministry of Physical Planning, Anambra State, Planning Permit Authority, Anambra Building Control Agency and Anambra Urban Renewal Agency. Furthermore, the law will be reinforced with the creation of new agencies to focus on the actualization of the governor's vision of urban regeneration that will likely give birth to greater onicha, greater newi, and greater ekulodia. So the law as it is will be amended. And then he has planned to create some other focused agencies. And I can tell you a few of them. There's a plan to create the greater onicha agency the Greater Newe and the Colombia. But these are agencies that will help in the urban regeneration of the states. He has started. Ecolobia is being regenerated. Uh, we demolished a lot of houses to make way for the flyover in the place. Onicha, which he prefers to call the Obi of Ndibai. A lot is happening. Well-planned roads, fountains. At the end of the day, the plan is that people will no longer run away from Anambra, especially on Onicha, to neighboring states because it was a slum. The essence of all the laws being packaged is that we must ensure that that mega city he wants Anambra to be is truly sustainable, prosperous, livable, and green. The plan to transform Anambra is something that is supported wholly by the Fiscal Planning Board. And I believe that when these laws are put in place, it will make things easier for us. Uh, we are getting more support in terms of uh, resources to do development control, uh, provision of vehicles, because we need to go around and, you know, con you know, continually on a daily basis to see what is happening. And then, of course, we have now determined that Anybody that brings any application for approval from an estate that is not approved, we will not. Because there is now a proliferation of estates which are alien to the fiscal planning board. We don't know who granted permission for those estates. And the reason why we also need to be sure where and what estate can exist is because unless you plan them well, sure you have a recipe for disaster and the, play, the state will develop in a haphazard manner. And that's one of the things that Mr. Governor doesn't want to see. So for Anambra State, I think we are in good times in terms of fiscal planning and development control. The challenges are there. Um, he's always on our back to make sure that we sit up. Uh, and he's helping us to sit up by providing the resources we need. To further implement its planning roles by the express approval and issuance of the Green Number 13 by Governor Saludo, the board is currently playing supervisory role in the lane of 2,000 fiber optic ducts for high internet speed across the state. This is in line with the present administration mantra of everything technology, technology everywhere. Governor Chukumacha Saludo, when he became governor, 
he saw the broadband plan for the state, which hadn't taken off. And um, he interviewed various companies, very vigorous interviews. And we selected two companies to provide duct infrastructure for the states. Because when you talk about broadband, broadband is the fastest mode of high-speed internet. It has to be via fiber. So we have licensed two people to provide fiber. One is doing two docks, the other is doing four docks. Those docks, fiber will go into them. Who are the owners of the fiber? Is the MTNs, the Airtels, and so on. And the reason for licensing only two is to comply with the national broadband policy, even though that says dig ones. And what it does is to encourage these telcos to come to Anambra and provide broadband services. Under a build, operate and transfer agreement, the state government engaged the services of Solution Eastern Fiber Limited to mainstream ANSGFDIP to build four ducts that will potentially service the telcos. IHS Towers is also building two ducts across the state. When completed, all the telecommunication industries in the country will be at liberty to lease the duct for the service of Indianabra to provide reliable internet. The outcome will result to increased ICT services across the state. We are, we've started the first 150 kilometers and should be rounding that up in May. 320 to 500 kilometers of the entire city. So basically they started at the origin on the express they went underground through a process known as trust boring, where you go under and you don't touch all of the state's um, infrastructure, the roads and um, underground pipes and all of that. So what we want to do is have 2,000 kilometers of this ducting infrastructure underground that will now lead fiber optic services to homes or what they call last mile. So basically, we've been in talks with several telcos they will be coming to do inspections just as you are doing right now. So, this is only the second state in the country that has allowed a neutral party, not a telecommunications company, not an infrastructure company, to build this infrastructure. We are taking that burden off of them by building this infrastructure so they can focus on their own core area of services provision to homes, offices, schools, and thereabouts. So prior to doing this, what is known as a technical survey or technical site survey is done. What that does is it looks at all of the major roads or metro, as well as all of the feeder roads where you have towers such as this. So we have a map of all of this on the ground. So the state for the first time can be able to say at this coordinate you have XYZ manholes. You have this number of manholes. You have XYZ number of cell sites. So the state has like a super highway underground and it's all mapped out. So all of that was done. The survey, each area was sketched. So there will not, nobody has to do this again for the next 25 to 50 years. It's done, it's ready. And all it does is just help the state in creating all of those um, services. So once again, Mr. Governor, thank you for the vision. Thank you for allowing an indigenous firm, because we're only the second. The first one was in Lagos. This is the second state that has allowed an indigenous firm not just to partake, but actually to implement. Indeed, Governor Saludo's forward-thinking strategies through the board will result in development in a more sustainable manner, further revenue generation and increased building plan approvals, subsequently contributing to the overall growth and advancement of the state. I tell people, when you must do new things, it's like when you want to make an omelette, you must break some eggs. So when we are breaking those eggs, please, the Indian Ambra should bear with us. At the end of the day, they will find out that it's in their interest. It's not because uh, the government is wicked. Government is not wicked. When we do planning and development control, it's to secure the safety and convenience of the larger populace. In the end, these strategies are likely to result in further revenue generation and increase the building plan approvals, contributing significantly towards the overall growth and development of Anambra State. Indeed, the solution that Indianambra seek is here. With all these plans put in place by Governor Chukumachao Saludo, Anambra State is certainly the destination. 
Follow us on our social media platform at Solution Footprint on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram, and at Solution FP on X, formerly Twitter. My name is Chidima Orangwa. Join us next week for another interesting edition. Kemesia. Every breath of our lives, we've trust in God. We will lift our homeland high. We believe in togetherness. We'll build.